Hello everyone, so welcome to week three of the 50 stitches crochet along and this week is the camel stitch. Now as you can see I've got two squares here because there's two variations of this stitch. This coral colour stitch is the simplest one and I'll just zoom in so you can see properly. So it creates a ribbing effect so it's really good to use on um, say cuffs of uh, jumpers or on brims of hats and it's textured on both sides and all it is is half double crochet made in the third loop and it brings this lovely braiding so what it does is it forces the front two loops to bend down and become part of this texture at the front the second variation is you switch between rows of half double crochet in the third loop and a row of half double crochet in the front loop. That keeps the texture on one side so there's no texture there at all and so all this braiding comes onto the front. I'm going to show you both and you can decide which square that you want to use for the project. So I'm going to start off with the simpler square so I'll just quickly show you this difference where the stitches are. Make sure I get the right way around. Okay. So half double crochet we have. This is the front loop. Okay, that one there. Then we have this one here. This is what you would normally see as the back loop for single crochet or double crochet. But here it's more of a middle loop and you turn round and you've got this third loop back here it's got a bit tight on this but it's usually much looser it's very easy to find normally, I'll show you that when we make it up but it's there and so when you stitch into that these ones bend down and become braided texture okay so how do we make our square? So for this one, we've got a 4.5 millimeter hook, and we're going to start by making a foundation row of 32, and we're going to half double crochet in the fourth loop from the hook, and then half double crochet in every stitch in our foundation chain. So remember, I always count the turning chain as a stitch. So you'll have 30 stitches in total including that turning chain. Okay, so first we need to make the turning chain for the next row. So for row two, we're gonna chain one, and then for the stitches on either end of the row, we're gonna crochet in the back two loops. So ignore the front loop there, and go into the back two. So I've got two loops there on the hook. And make your turning chain. So I like the alternate turning chain which I'll put the link to in the description if you haven't done it before. There we go. So we need to make this the height of a double crochet because the singer won't just won't give us enough height for this. Okay. So the reason we go into the two loops on the end is just to strengthen the um, edge of our stitch, edge of the square. So if we just did it in a single loop, I'll show you for the next stitch. I'm just going to go into the back one for this one, the third loop, sorry. And oops. So, front loop, that's the second loop, and this is the third loop on top. See, it's, it's actually quite easy to find. And oh, I'm having trouble today. <laughs> it's one of those days. Excuse me a second. Right there we go. And as you can see, because it's going with a single loop, that's pulling up. This will straighten out as we go along um, the row, so don't worry about it. It will pull itself back. But to have that on the edge of the row wouldn't. It won't be too good for rounding a border. So that's why on our end stitches we're going to do through all three. So. Half double. Oh, I have to 
doesn't want to work today. All right, for half double, yarn over into that third loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. There you go. And that's all there is to it. Yarn over, into that third loop, yarn over and pull through all three. It's a really simple stitch, but it creates that beautiful ribbing effect. And you just keep doing that all down the row. And that is all there is to it. Cotton splinting today. There we go. So yarn over into the third loop, pull through, yarn over, all through three loops. And you can see that texture is already coming up. It's forced the other two loops down and it just creates that lovely braiding. And it will look ribbed as well once we get through more rows. You're going to do 15 rows of this in total, which makes the border really easy. You just do two single crochet in the side of each half double crochet, and of course, a single crochet in each stitch across the top and bottom. Each row will have 30 stitches, and simpler that. It's a really easy stick to make up and it should be quite a fast square to make. So I'm just going to carry on down the row. So that third loop is really easy to find. They stand out really nicely. So one, two, and three at the back. So it's, it's not an awkward stitch to do, it's really easy to find that third loop. And easy breezy. So I'm just going to carry on down this row and then I'll do the turn and then I'll show you how we do the second version. So if you're just sticking with this one, it's the simplest one, you just carry on like this. You turn and just carry on in the back loop. No problem at all. So those days the hook doesn't want to work for you. stitches. Okay, so now I'm going to work into the top of the turning chain. Take that out. First stitch 30. Excuse me a second. Okay. And then that's one. There we go, and turn. So chain one. So if you're going to carry on in the back loops, you'll make your turning chain in the top two loops, in the back two loops, sorry. So ignore the... F no, you do a single crochet. Half double crochet on the brain. So alternate turning chain is 
going to be the two single crochet stacks on top of each other. So we do that. So there's the front loop, and we'll make the turning chain in the back two. Now for the second variation of this stitch, we want all the texture on one side. To do that, we need to make the rows in the front loop. So for the turning chain, we'd actually do oops, tangled. Do the turning chain in the front two loops instead. I'll show you what this does. Okay. So, still half double crochet, but front loop only. I'll just do a few and I'll show you what effect this is going to create. So for this one, all the texture is on one side, so the back, which is what we're looking at now, is flat. There's no texture here. Do a couple more, then I'll show you. Right, so I'll turn that over. You see the ribbing started on the other side. So there's our first set, and now we've got working in the front loop. We're putting what would have been on the opposite side. And the original square is now on the front. So the half double is a really handy stitch and you can create some lovely effects if you play around with which loops you're going into. So which one you decide to use is entirely up to you. So the simplest one is this one and you just go into the back loop for every single row. That's it. Just remember those end stitches to put them into two loops so we can strengthen the edge ready for the border. For this one the odd number rows you would do in the back loop, even number into the front loop, and that's you get the uh, texture that way. For the border, you just put two single crochet in the side of each half double crochet, so you'll have 30 stitches across, then add the two. The extra stitch for the corner, so you have 32 in total all the way around. So into the sides, two single crochet into the side of each half double crochet, and the extra stitch in the corner. And that is all there is to it. So I can't wait to see what you do in the um, in the Facebook group. Which one you choose? Please do come and show us. And as always, if you have any questions, just come over and ask. And I'm always happy to help. So thank you for joining me and I will see you for next week's square.